Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast. Of course, it's the only wrestling podcast online. My name's Cameron Osborne. I'm sitting right there. His name is Mike the Shoot Shepherd. <laughs> and this is a very special edition of the Shoot Brothers. Shoot Brothers After Dark, baby. Grab yourself some vino and yeah. uh, put your feet up. <laughs> Have uh, a little nightcap. Uh, put um, put on your softest of robes and really just reward yourself because it's Friday night. You worked hard all week and uh, we're here with some big old wrestling action. There hours and hours of AEW. We've got a pay per view this weekend. Uh, and, um, and then Mike and I also have, like, personal lives. Like, we also have other things that we have to do. <laughs> uh, that isn't all this professional wrestling, but goddamn, Mike, uh, what a great time it continues to be to be a professional wrestling fan. Yeah, I, it kind of feels like everyone is up in their game right now. Competition breeds, uh, the best out of everyone. Yeah, there's an expression that I know I know you're going I got, for. I was there going is for a, it. I, I, it's, I left. Qu- it's quippy. I definitely <laughs> I forgot the second. <laughs> I did. It, it exists. It definitely exists yeah. out there. A rising tide lifts all boats. Sure. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, well, let's get into uh, let's get in the show then, shall we? We know the way that we like to kick off the podcast, which is of course by crowning a brand new tweet of the week champion. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. <laughs> big, big episode of Dynamite this uh, this past week, right? We're at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is... is they, what, what do they do there? What do they do there? Home of the Tennis U.S. Open. Home of the U.S. Open. Take that, yeah. uh, Raul Wimbledon. Nadal. <laughs> Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, huge crowd. And um, so, of course, you know, a huge crowd in New York City. Those, you know, who live in the New York area are going to attend... Um, including, uh, Nina Friedman. Friedman. Ooh. That's an odd last name. Uh, Nina, a uh, woman named Nina Friedman posted a photo saying, probably not going to make the cover of Parents Magazine, but see you at Asher Earth Stadium tonight at MJF. A photo of a oh. Mr. and Mrs. MJF holding, uh, holding a sign. <laughs> Mr. MJF is wearing a shirt that says, I hate MJF. <laughs> uh, and Mama MJF is wearing a holding holding sign that says "We're MJF's parents, and we think he sucks too." <laughs> and MJF uh, responded what? to his parents the only way that you probably could, which is just by saying "Fuck off, mom." <laughs> I love it. The family is committed to the case. The family is committed to the bit. Uh, for that reason, MJF, uh, yeah, th- uh, three time, three time Twilight League champion right now. Um, yeah. And he's got he's got longevity. He's going to be in the running for this title for a long, long for time. years. He will be, uh, yeah, in the running for this title just as long as he will be in the running for <laughs> just kind of dominance in the rest of the uh, the company. Really, yeah. Well done, Mr. Friedman. Congratulations. And Mr. and Mrs. Friedman. Oh, yeah, the whole family is all over the place on this <laughs> the one. The whole Friedman family. Is oh. that his real name? I'm not sure. Uh, it must, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> congratulations to everyone involved. Um, congratulations, MJF, our brand new Tweet of the Week champion. Let's get into some, uh, well, we're going to do something a little bit different this week on the show. We're Instead of instead of following the week in a, week in a chronological type of way, we're just going to throw wrestling tidbits at you. <laughs> Just you know, nice. here and there, because uh, we're hot off the heels of All Out. We have a bit of time to chill before full, before full gear. Uh, so we, we can take it easy there. And, of course, we have Extreme Rules coming up just this uh, this Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. Sunday, mm-hmm. baby. Live from San Jose, California, home of Bailey. Uh, before, say, we, yeah. before we get to that, uh, let's get into some All Elite Wrestling action because we only have a few more weeks to cover professional wrestling here on TNT because uh, we're moving to TBS soon, baby. Uh, let's get into some AEW Dynamite. AEW. All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. That's right. Uh, the week prior, I guess one of the biggest things was uh, the debut of Adam Cole, baby. Baby. Taking on Mr. Frankie Kazarian. Um, so, yeah. I mean, uh, 
I guess one of the things I noticed was a nice custom leather jacket he's wearing to the ring. And, uh, but they didn't quite get the boom down yet when he just boom taunt. Well, um, because song, there's no song for it to go yeah, with. no song boom. Or he'll like, figure it out, though. He'll figure it out. <laughs> just figure out the boom. You'll be fine. Yeah. Anyways, it was good. The match was fun. Uh, Cole hits the Panama Sunrise, hits the last shot, gets a nice win. Um, and probably one of the better Frankie Kazarian matches you'll see in a while. Well, then I was going to say, Frankie Kazarian, the, uh, he, uh, who's the guy in WWE when you get there, you face him first? Is it Dolph? Baron Corbin. Yeah, Ziggler's one of them. Uh, yeah. Z- Ziggler's going to be one of them. And uh, I feel like Frankie Kazarian is also kind of one of them. We just got this with Christian Cage <laughs> a few months back, and now Adam Cole. Uh, you yes. know, sort of, you know, uh, this vet who comes in and he's gonna put on a great, he's gonna put on a great match. He's gonna lose, and uh, yeah, he's this was classic Adam Cole here. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Uh, it's one of my other moments was when Malachi Black comes out in his cloak to cut a promo, and he says, "We have an enemy among us," and then we pan to Rosario Dawson in the crowd, uh, star of Josie and the Pussycats. And, uh, and so was, the Go Big Show, I think. <laughs> I think that's why yeah, she was there. I, mean, I think she was the only person was released the, in the last twelve years. She was the only person uh, on the panel who was like, "Yeah, Cody, I'll do your stupid wrestling thing." Yeah, so <laughs> she ends up jumping on Malachi Black, but that was uh, then we never see her again. Uh, so I guess it was just a one time, like, "Hey, I'm in, I'm in town. I'll yeah, yeah, I'll jump on you." Malachi is back. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, what, anything else special for you from the last week? Before the big one, uh, on our lead up to uh, yeah, on our everything lead. else is just kind of booking or settling in the big feud. Yeah, well, of course, we're booking an eventual tag that are that is going to happen um, on the following week's rampage after the Adam Cole Frank Zarian match. The Bucks came down uh, to lay lay the beat down, and then after that, Christian Cage, Lucius, Jungle Boy all came out. Oh, yeah. um, so they, yeah. Because that's going to be a six man tag that we're going to book. The Super Click is back. <laughs> they got so many different groups, so many different names. And but, so many uh, different shirts. Yeah. You know, it's like musicians in the 80s. They're in like five different bands. Exactly. Different names, different names. Exactly. We had, a, we had a classic, just normal, run of the mill mjf promo uh we're getting mjf brian <laughs> pillman jr that was uh happened a couple weeks ago and of course we're heading to new york it's gonna be a big match uh he just did a classic run down the town he's in like you're all trash people and it's funny like there's a lot of places that you can go to in the united states where like a lot of mjf is saying is probably right you know like <laughs> you're all poor you're all uneducated, and you're all in love with your sister. And you're like, actually, that <laughs> probably describes a good chunk of uh, the United States. Uh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, and then, yeah, I think at one point he started kicking the ghost of Brian Pillman on the ground. So he's not afraid. He's not afraid. To Literally to kick him when he's down. Does he just have a... Uh, <laughs> Like a green, like a, just like a pass to like, hey, you can say whatever you want. He sort of seems like he has a, <laughs> sometimes it feels like MJF has a, one thing MJF is great at is being very, very mean and rude without swearing. It's like, or like without cussing kind of, you know, like what would be appropriate on PG television, but not PG 13 yeah. television. It's just <laughs> using synonyms, just parts of his lexicon where he can just... Uh, not many people can do that, you know? No, he's definitely one of the best. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's all I got. Uh, and then Brian Danielson down to the ring with Tony Schiavone. Um, oh, yes, For the special interview, which is almost immediately <laughs> interrupted by Don Callis and... Uh, Kenny Omega, you know, despite, uh, so, and, Ken, and Brian Danielson was saying pretty much just, hey, you're the best. People see, people also say I'm the best, so want to fight. And Don Callis is doing the big over dramatic, nodding no with his head. Yeah. Big. Crowd and, says yes. Just, just so when Kenny Omega could say yes, Don Callis gets to, ah, wearing his nice <laughs> pink suit. He's been, uh, adding a lot of pink to his, uh, his uh, wardrobe lately best dressed is that a uh is that a shooty just kind of uh, good best hair you know? uh, just best dressed yeah, oh, yeah. as a general 
Yeah, we certainly could. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I, I could include in ring or out of the ring. Yeah, I I don't think that we have an in ring uh ge- like best ring gear. gear type thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll call it. We'll call it best. Uh, yeah. Best dressed. <laughs> yeah, he's a candidate. That's for sure. Makes sense. Um, yeah, that was a fun fun interview segment there. There was some a lot of yes chance going on. Everyone loves the yes chance. Everyone loves the yes chance. Uh, it seems like they're shying away a bit from the from the uh, yes chance. Yeah, I think Brian said he's not going to lead the crowd in the chance, but everyone's going to do them anyways. Yeah, everyone's going to do them anyways. Yeah, until we come up with a new chant. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, of course, this is the week before the Arthur, Arthur Ash show, um, and that was the last one. Mox, Moxley and Kingston versus two point oh two point oh new uh, BTE champions. Gotta say. Um, both of them? Bo- uh, collectively, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> got to got to put over these guys. Good Canadian kids. They lose their job and next thing you know they're main eventing <laughs> Dynamite as the BT champion. Uh Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, real rise real uh, rise to glory. <laughs> I got to say, I got to say it was a good one. No, yeah, it's the best getting fired was the best career move they ever had. Honestly, it must have been. Well, and uh, with no further ado, I guess uh, let's get to our big uh, let's get to our big show, right? Should we rampage in between? Ooh, baby! Rampage, 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 rampage. Well, there was a couple title matches, so I think we should address those. Uh, because, I mean, coming hot, one of the hottest matches of the years, uh, Lucha Brothers with those tag titles defended against the uh, recently reunited Butcher and his Blade. Because, I mean, what good is a Butcher without a Blade and hey, vice versa? Hey, Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, just some good tag, good tag team stuff. Good to see Butcher back. Um, also, I don't know. I just noticed it during this show. I don't know when it started or how long it's been there, but uh, the ring mat had logos on it, like the Rampage logo in the corners and I think, the AEW logo. Yeah, in the I think that's just Rampage. Okay, so they've had it every week. I just didn't notice. Maybe. I think they have also. Uh, I have also <laughs> noticed it, uh, but I did, yeah, I didn't say anything. But yeah, I have also yeah. noticed that. So you're not crazy. Okay. Uh, I guess the big moment here, they tie Pentagon's mask to the ropes. So he's trapped as they're beating up Phoenix, but then Penta sacrifices his pride as he jumps out of the corner, ripping his mask off, but he covers his face. Phoenix hits a big super kick, and uh, Phoenix gets the pin, so the Luchas retain the belt. Sacrificing his identity for his younger brother. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Pen- Penta Butcher in a uh, hair mask match. That's, the, I feel like, the one ma- match type we haven't had. Not only in a long, long time, but in AEW. That feels like something I would want to do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Butcher's got, Butcher's got a lot of hair. Shaved, but it was... Butcher's, yeah. yeah, but but it was... But it, was it, it was for no reason. But it was seemingly <laughs> involuntary and uh, yeah. random. And then the group broke up like <clears throat> what are they called the nightmare fucking divas or collective something? <laughs> or sisters what was her name melissa something or something like that <laughs> yeah mel melanie i can't it was something yeah, yeah. we haven't seen her since maybe Poor she's just waiting until R.I.P. Her hair grows back. r.i.p melanie maybe they yeah she's waiting until her hair grows back <laughs> and then they'll bring TV. her back for jr like to say oh that's, that's melanie <laughs> uh Speaking of haircut, yeah, they just they're they're playing up this uh, Hardy family office angle. They want to cut Orange Cassidy's hair for some reason. And I mean, we said it before; like he's got nice hair, but it's very short. You shave his head within a couple weeks. It'll yeah, back, like so. it, it's more effective <laughs> if it's long, flowing. If it was like hair. Jungle Boy. You'd be like, God, no, Jungle Boy, not Jungle that Boy. So, yeah, <laughs> that hair is so or the much. Bu- yeah, the Bucks. You know, it just really, honestly, anyone with long hair, like. Yeah. Shaving John Moxley's hair isn't exactly a uh, but uh, but Orange Cassidy is the the top power ranked uh, guy right now contender exactly him yeah. powerhouse Hobbs did Moxley. he uh, 
I know he he's had world title matches. Has he faced Kenny during his title reign? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, him, Kenny, Pac, uh, whatever pay per view. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Where oh, uh, where he all oh, he almost won like four times. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then there was a great face to face between Britt Baker and Ruby Soho, and uh, yeah, I just thought this went over really well. The crowd was hot. Bunch of lines dropping in there about yeah. Baker's like, oh yeah, go get another tattoo, go change your hair, and blah blah blah. You know, not blah blah blah, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta say this actually. Um, uh, this 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 was a fantastic promo because the fans were so engaged, and yeah. it's really something when both people can talk <clears throat> and nobody is like the fans aren't. You know the fan, the it, it, the fans, the fan volume goes to a you know a, a murmur. No one's yeah. yelling they, shit when Britt's talking, <laughs> and no one's yelling shit when Ruby's talking. And it feels good. Ruby had, had <clears throat> Ruby had a Ruby had the great line that puts her in shooty contention of the year. This one line was enough for me when she was like, "You're like every broad I've ever been face to face with, um, <laughs> like uh, self centered." Uh, th- you know, thinks it's all about you and banging some dude in the back, and everyone Woo! just goes, "Woo, man!" Yeah. And that put her that <laughs> that put her that put her straight to the top of the uh, of the uh, nominations for me personally. Personally, yeah, they had some good some it good. It was the jobs. way she said, she like, uh, "Every broad I've ever been across the <laughs> ring from." Like, you know what he calls them. He calls women broads. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's done that yeah. since 1986. And Ruby's just like, hey, some broad in the back. I don't know. It got me. It got me. <laughs> well, there you go. Promo of the year. Hey, I mean, it, 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 it's on the list right now. It's on the list. Oh, okay. Yeah. She also had a good line about uh, Brit's head being up Tony Khan's ass. Kind of a rare name drop there, Tony Khan. Yeah. We don't see him or hear about him. Or sometimes you hear TK. No, not very much. TK. Uh, but anyways, yeah, great promo. They, Of course, they take swings at each other at the end. But crowd was hot for both women. Everyone wants to see the match. So, uh, yeah, best, I would say, easily the best women's promo segment in AEW history. Because don't really get a lot of microphone time in general from them. Yeah, and this was an episode of Rampage where we actually got uh, time for the uh, time for a woman's promo and time for a woman's match. Yeah, after after two weeks earlier, straight but, uh, of SmackDown with no women's matches at all, it felt refreshing to actually <laughs> see the women involved. <laughs> it was a quick little one, but uh, our girl Anna J is she Canadian? Uh, no, the bunnies, bunny, <laughs> the bunnies Canadian. Oh, the bunnies. Sorry, yeah, I got to yeah, make it yeah, yeah. Anna J though gets the win. She's still good. They're both cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But then the main event match was the uh, Miro defending his TNT title against Fuego del Sol, who has also put his car on the line. Uh, it was like a, like a like a like a like a Jetta. Like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like it was like yeah, my car. Uh, still, you know, I mean, still a 15, set of wheels. Grand, it's still a know. set of wheels. You're right. He's racing for pink slips here on the in this match. Um, uh, you know, we uh, we all know what to expect. But he lasts pretty good here. He gets a. Gets a nice couple moves in, some near falls, but of course, eventually Miro just swats him down like a fly and uh, hits a massive super kick to the back of the head to get the three, retain the title, and win a car. But uh, like you said, I'm sure Miro drives a much nicer car. He doesn't want this vehicle. He just takes the keys and stuffs them into Fuego's mouth and then puts them in the game over until uh, Sammy Guevara comes out to make the save. So. Helping out his boy. <clears throat> Not only helping next out his boy, line. but next, well, you know, I mean, if if using Fuego del Sol to get Sammy Guevara that TNT title is what we got to do, then hey, that's what we got to do. <laughs> right? Miro's, yeah, Miro's certainly. Yeah, Miro's had like a lot of really good matches, I feel, in this like run, but he's just been knocking them all down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like the TNT title uh, overall, I mean, every reign's been pretty good, but. Uh, it's not like the world title. He doesn't have to go a year. You know, a four-month reign is a good reign. 
off to the next guy. Well, uh, kind of I also uh, I was texting with AC Dirt today, and he said something about a, uh, a, a another title possibly being introduced. <laughs> I heard something about this oh, three letter okay. title. Yeah, is this uh, <laughs> is this a is this, this is this a group text that he's sending out individually, <laughs> like like uh, like James Bunker used to do when he would just highlight everybody in his contact <laughs> list and send them the same nonsense. He's trying to yeah. AC Dirt, he wants to make it seem like you're special. He's like, hey, I got a scoop for you. Don't yeah, tell anyone. Scoop for it. TBS. I, 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 I haven't told TBS anyone. Title. I haven't told anyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, Rampage is going to stay on TNT so they can keep the name TNT title. It'll still makes sense. And uh, yeah, and then the other one covers. Um, so Dynamite yeah. goes on to TBS. TBS. And... So there's no conflict of basketball. Anything like that? Yeah. And is it the same? Is it more people? I don't. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't honestly. It doesn't affect <laughs> us. It doesn't. It doesn't affect I think, us. Well, yeah. The show will be the same. Everything will be fine. So let's just continue on with the show because uh, they've been building up this one. It's almost like a pay per view episode of Dynamite. AEW, all elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. Uh, because it's, I mean, it's bigger than any crowd they've ever had for any pay-per-view. This is the biggest Dynamite audience, a di- biggest AEW audience of all time. Wow. This is the Grand Slam. 20,177. That's uh, our official count. Yeah. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, Grand Slam baseball. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, tennis. They play for the Grand Slam. So that's why it's, they're playing in the tennis arena. Either one makes sense. I just thought it was a good name. Just Grand Slam. Yeah, either way, it's a good name. You know, no one else is uh, using it in wrestling. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was slightly better than their other option of uh, 40 Love. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they thought that didn't sound that good, so we'll save it. Well, I tell you what. When you got three men on base, I don't know if there's anyone you want more coming up to the plate than these next two guys because... They're kicking off the show with a Grand Slam. We've been talking about this match only for a few weeks because this man wasn't even in the company. Uh, Mr. Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, taking on Kenny Omega. Uh, Just in a non-title match, 30-minute time limit. But, um, you know, we're just going to let them go here. (laughs) Mm. And uh, Brian pretty much looking, uh, you know, he came out in his traditional... uh, Maroon, burgundy sort of color. Yeah. Uh, just pretty much classic. You know, he looked like WWE Daniel Bryan. The same, sorry. Brian Daniels. <laughs> but, that's uh, going to get you a couple, a couple times, eh? It's going to get me a couple yeah. times. <laughs> but here we are. Largest crowd ever. 20,000 and some odd. 30-minute uh, time limit. And before, I mean, the bell rings. The crowd is just... On their feet. It was a solid minute of just just nothing. Nothing. I mean, nothing but cheering. (laughs) I mean, nothing in the ring. They were just looking at each other. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But Uh, the crowd is just going nuts and chanting. You you hear breakouts of yeses, breakouts of holy shit, break breakouts of a dubs. It's uh, yeah. yeah, The stare down. That was one of the most (laughs) intense stare down. That was Hogan. That was like a Hogan Rock WrestleMania 17 <laughs> level fucking. Look. It was pretty big. It was yeah, pretty it was. damn big. That was pretty damn big. Pop of the yeah. pop of the year is a is it's, a yeah, is a. There's shooting. a lot of that this, could be considered uh, a pop to some <laughs> yeah, to some maybe definitely to most crowd reaction of the year. I don't know. I think pop of the uh, year. I think that counts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can call it whatever we want. We can call it what we want, but uh, this was great. I mean, as soon as they touched. The crowd just cheers even more, and they're doing some just old school wrestling, methodical grappling, tons of just stiff kicks and chops. Uh, crowd, I love the one thing when Brian's in the corner, and every time he kicks, they do the yes, and every time he chops, they do the woo, and he's just all today, and he's like, woo, yes, woo, yes. So chop, this kick, is something chop, that I also noticed throughout the year or throughout the match, almost as if, like you were saying before, him trying to stay away from the yes, if he kicks too many times. They'll it'll just be a big yes <laughs> chant. So he would eventually he found a strategy. He would just go kick chop kick chop kick chop kick. I chop. think it was also just fun just to have two different cheers. Oh, I mean, why the hell different. not? You know, but uh, <laughs> but still, you know, too many kicks in a row, and he would just get just get a bunch of yeses. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, he's using those kicks to weaken Kenny's arm from that label lock. But Kenny just keeps going with vicious knife edge chops. Brian's chest was just ground beef. By the end of this thing, oh, red, oh raw, man, oh, we could bloody. have a sloppy <laughs> hamburger after this one. Oh boy, uh, but you know, we had some high flying as well. Kenny Omega, he loves to do some flips, so nice tope can hero to the floor, landing hard there. And uh, then they go back in the ring, and Brian busts out a move we haven't seen from him in a long time the cattle mutilation, which got a huge pop from the crowd because uh, I only see him use this maybe once or twice in his whole WWE run, but he was famous for this move before, back in Ring of Honor days, so. And that was, you know, just one of those uh, banned... <laughs> just a cool... Uh, uh, wrestling, I don't even know if it was banned. Wrestling. I think they're just like, it looks stupid, don't do it. But I think it's a great submission. That's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> don't do it. It's just, uh, yeah, what is it? It's kind of like an underhook, upside down. An underhook, and then he just like flips over chin top. Lo- and inverted like chin lock... Yeah, I think they don't like it because you can't see the guy's face or something. So they're like, we can't see his face. Or, I don't know. We got to you know see his is. face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called uh, acting. They, <laughs> <laughs> they fight their way onto the ramp. And then this is when Kenny hits Brian with a vicious snap dragon suplex onto the ramp. And Brian's trying to recover on the ropes. Kenny walks his way up to the top of the ramp. Also, he can get room for a big running start to hit the world's biggest V-trigger as his knee just explodes into Brian's face. Down that uh, beautiful seen... LED ramp. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> it was a very nice uh, piece of architecture. Yeah, I've never seen a bigger V-trigger than that one there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was nice. Uh, then I think back in the ring, Kenny goes for a buckle bomb on Brian, but he barely... He even hits the buckle. He just, like, falls over the top of the ropes and twists and crash. And great impact. Jim Ross said it looked like a car crash. He was great in this <laughs> match. Uh, so, anyways, yeah. Kenny, the, he goes for the avalanche dragon suplex for another big near fall. Hits a V-trigger. Goes for the one-winged angel. But then Danielson reverses that into a poison rana. He goes for his running knee. What were they calling it? The Boo Psycho knee, I think. Uh, like they that. didn't call it. Yeah, they didn't call it anything specifically. I didn't catch. They had something. Okay. But, uh, anyways, he didn't hit it. He didn't hit it. But Kenny hits another V trigger. Big two count. Climbs up to the top rope. Goes for a Phoenix splash. But Brian rolls out of the way of that. Uh, then he just goes on a roll. Just starts kicking the shit out of Kenny's head. Tries to get in the bell lock. And at this time, the ring announcer lets us know that there's only one minute left, but you can barely even hear him because the crowd is so loud. Uh, so he's in the label lock. Kenny gets to the ropes. Both men are on their knees, just exchanging blows back and forth. And then the bell rings, much to the chagrin of the crowd. Uh, the time has expired. We have a draw. They weren't disappointed in the match. They're just like, oh, it's over. You're uh, like, oh, I forgot. He's at a time <laughs> limit. No. <laughs> yeah. So both men beaten down, but uh, I mean, you can't even complain. This was just an amazing, fantastic match of the year candidate match right here. Um, I mean, yeah, in my opinion. And in, in your opinion, your <laughs> humble opinion, the crowd, the crowd was on their feet from start to finish. Man, imagine being there on this fucking match on the big fight feeling even though it wasn't even actually for the championship uh no. this and, and <laughs> they could have gone another 30 sure they, why they not the and they have the stamina to do it <laughs> this didn't have to be what's crazy about this match this was such, this was the rarest opportunity of this match didn't need a story because it was just about these two men who have often been called the best in the world at various points in history both of these men have been called the best at what they do, and they were both just kind of trying to prove their claim to that title. It was it was simple. It was like I feel like the fans drove the match in that kind of way, right? If we weren't going yeah. insane for every single thing that happened, uh, yeah, the ending, like you said, you know, might have might have ticked yeah. off everybody, but yeah, it's I feel like that's fine. Because yeah, I think they, part they left two, some on the table. Whatever yeah. it is, uh, sixty-minute Iron Man match. 
whatever it is that brings <laughs> yes yeah exactly right yeah sure doesn't matter two out of three falls have kenny kenny can do another 75 minute match right he uh he's already got one oh, under yeah. his belt and uh so, i think that's uh daniel bryan's first five star match so you got to give it to him there so that's what i was gonna say so mr Meltzer gives this match five stars which i don't necessarily disagree with but um this is daniel bryan's first five star match ever which i gotta say i wouldn't say this is bryan's best match in his career by a long shot so i don't know kind of weird is what I'm saying. I, I, I've seen half a dozen matches with Brian that I thought were better than this match, as good as it was. Oh yeah, what's uh, what's what's more of a favor that comes to to comes to mind? Anything? Uh, I liked Brian versus John Cena at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian versus Punk at th- I can't remember what pay per view. Okay. Okay. Uh, so even then- Brian versus even Brian versus Brock Lesnar, I liked just as much as this Kenny Omega match. Right, Brian okay. versus AJ Styles when he won the. Title. Oh, that was a great one. All those too. matches. Okay, like so there are a couple. There are a couple out there where you can. It's kind not. Of... It's not that I don't like the five star. It's that how could this man? How could it be his first? Daniel Bryan. We've all seen. Great yeah. Matches. How was Kofi How Kingston. was Daniel Bryan <laughs> AJ not five? And if and if you're talking about the crowd, then yeah. What about Kofi? Uh, Do you think this was the best Daniel Bryan match you've ever seen? Um, this was. I feel like the most fun one of the maybe the most <laughs> fun daniel bryan match because i think yeah i do that crowd i mean it is if it is yeah I, i'm gonna say most fun i uh <laughs> but yeah if you're right i would put this the kofi was the best feeling daniel bryan match and then uh i mean yeah that brock lesnar match was fun i see i was saying i bet all of these that we're talking about are like four and a half star matches you know it was yeah. like they're it's all like that, uh, it's not yeah. like they were like oh this was trash or whatever because yeah because you're right brock kofi AJ, those were ba- ba- bang, bang, bang. Yeah. But it is something <laughs> it's to nothing, go. Uh, to, I, I, but, you know, what a year Daniel Bryan, Brian da- Bri- Daniel Bryan Danielson. That's Maybe that's what we should call him. <laughs> um, to, so he, the last time we saw Daniel Bryan Danielson, um, wasn't he main eventing WrestleMania? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't the very last time. No, that wasn't the very quite last time. Oh, right. You, he we got a match Smackdown after that. With Roman. Yeah, we yeah. got one on. He Sm- made him at SmackDown as well. But either way, he was he went out as a top contender for the Universal title. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, that's uh, that, either way. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to get on a. That's you know something. how I feel about. It. No, I know. I know. I, I of course ratings. know how you feel. But what a uh, what a year for Daniel Bryan Danielson. Uh, to go from, yeah, being involved in that Universal Championship to now his first five-star match. Congratulations. In the Mike the Shoot Shepherd catalog, this is his sixth five-star match. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm giving him five. I'm rec- giving him five the, for this the one. Record, Don't get me wrong. The record books are being record kept. Books. So uh, If I ever, yeah, I'll, uh, if I ever release this book. <laughs> It'll come out, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, next up on the card, <laughs> we're still at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, CM Punk comes down to deliver a promo where he was all like, "Ah, he was like, yelling I can't a lot." Follow that. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> he was no, yelling a lot too. Yeah, he was like, "New York City." That. Uh, and then he said something about, <laughs> um, you know, "Fuck you, Team Taz," because of course they choked him out last week on uh, on Dynamite. I guess we kind of skipped past that. Um, and even he was like, hey, even in our New York, Team Taz, hey, your fans don't like you. Uh, <laughs> because we're getting Powerhouse Hobbs and CM Punk in a matchup uh, here on Rampage. Hey, CM Punk's first television uh, match in uh, seven plus seven years, years, probably. And that so that takes up an entire commercial chunk, you know, like a pre-commercial. Like, that takes up a whole thing. So after the commercial yeah. break, we come back, and uh, we have the match. We were talking about it earlier today. MJF, Brian Pillman Jr. making their entrance. Says Julia Hart and Wardlow uh, standing near at ringside. Yeah, um, you know this was, uh, it was. It's hard to follow that opening match. Uh, that's pretty much. I mean, the match was still fine. It was solid. Everyone loves to boo MJF, uh, and he's doing his sleazy heel stuff, like grabbing Julia Hart to protect, protect himself from Brian doing a dive. And, uh, yeah. Eventually, Pillman gets a couple moves in, hits a big baseball slide, but uh, tries to follow up with the springboard clothesline, but then MJF just catches him in the salt of the earth, and Pillman taps out only in a few minutes. I like a lot of people have. A lot of people have tapped out yeah. before. You know, yeah. There's no shame um, in that. 
no shame. I just feel I didn't think Pillman would win the match or anything. I just thought maybe he'd get a little bit more, a little bit more after all that build up and you know his family getting dissed on. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> it, might, it might not be over. I mean, I guess, no, it might not be over. Either way, he got featured more than he has, I guess. Or I don't know. What's Griff Garrison? Is he hurt? Griff or, Garrison. Or... Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? But uh, yeah, either way, it was fine. Uh, but then we get Malachi Black taking on Cody Rhodes, who uh, gets some very noticeable boos coming out from this hardcore crowd here. I think uh, the, the crowd wants. The crowd seems to want Malachi. Yeah, and uh, I mean, even we haven't seen Cody really wrestle in a little, very much at all, and people. Well, he still had he had this. the episode. He he was around in August, I think, when we had Homecoming. Though the first match with Malachi Black, and then before that was like f- a fucking month before that. Yeah, he just hasn't been as consistent, you know. And then I think it was like a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's wrestled four times in four months. Four times in four months. Wow. And wow. Uh, the crowd. I mean, yeah, like. I think they're the Cody. He's playing into it. I think now a bit. Uh, he looks more self indulgent than ever. He's comes up rising through the floor with this ridiculously long cape. This big, just American. <laughs> I don't. The, it was like a fucking twenty foot cape. This he looked like Homelander. Up. Yeah, he's, he's Homelander, doing a Homelander yeah. thing now. <laughs> uh, and he had his wife Brandy with him, so she's making her return to TV. Congratulations to uh, uh, what? Uh, check out Roads to the Top live on <laughs> Stars Network. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, we'll so, see. or some shit. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, uh, but yeah, I feel like at this point, Cody's. I don't know. I've been saying that for a long time, <laughs> but this heel—he's got to be turning heel. He's he, right? got to turn Cody heel as soon as we finish. Uh, filming the big show <laughs> the go big show <laughs> yeah because uh yeah the crowd is just fully behind malachi here and every time cody gets in any offense they just boo everything and uh as i noted before black his face just keeps transforming even more it's almost half painted now and his eye turned red if you've noticed uh, yeah I, I, ever since you brought it up yeah i have known i have yeah. been it's got it. white it's like it's gonna be like a skull when he's done it's like black <laughs> and white <laughs> maybe uh so anyways he's uh black's in control he just sits down in the middle of the ring so then brandy goes she slides in the ring a uh, huge chorus of booze for her and she just gives him the finger says fuck you so uh that's pretty heelish so black just laughs at her cody tries to sneak him from behind but Black's got a counter for everything, and he ends up hitting his his black mass spinning heel kick. But Cody falls out of the ring, so Black can't negotiate the pinfall in time. But uh, Cody just fights back, starts targeting Black's leg, and he's able to hit the crossroads, but Black kicks out at two. So then Arn jumps up with the apron, uh, but then he appears to slip and fall accidentally. <laughs> Oh, are you sure? <laughs> and everyone's just like, oh, I, like, old man down. Uh, yeah, I couldn't quite tell. Then Cody kind of looks over, like, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. was this was this supposed to? I have no was, idea what happened. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, the weird part. Cause, uh, so then he gets up, and then he jumps back on the apron, and then Cody gets shoved to him, and he falls down again. So it's like. And then I, Cody kind of yeah, comes the, down, and he goes, I'm okay. And, yeah, he uh, shoves him away. So I think the first fall was unplanned. You know, old people fall sometimes. Hey, Arn Anderson has to be approximately <laughs> 70. Uh, I really don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah, he shoves Cody. Get back in there. I'm fine. And Cody gets back in the ring. Black's in the corner. Um, Cody just beats him down, but he won't break. So the ref has to get in between them. And Cody ends up elbowing the ref in the face, which gives Black the opportunity to spray Cody in the face with the Black Mist. And then the inside cradle to get the three count. The black, black mist. mist. Yeah, we all know that mist. It's deadly. Yeah, back but, in the but, day, the different by colors. The, by the time things. Cody got to the ring, it was very clear that he was not going to get cheers. Um, <laughs> and I think, yeah, I think you're right. Like AEW has a chance to turn Cody heel in a very natural way. You know, he yeah. can. I I took the high road and everyone booed me, so I'm done taking the high road. And then he shits on his American flag, uh, cape, <laughs> and that, that really puts him <laughs> over. <laughs> and uh, then he can go back on his pledge to challenge for the world title. 
And so right. Malachi Black has beaten Cody twice in a row now, twice in two months. Uh, so Malachi yeah. Black, it's time for you to to move on yourself and yeah, uh, on to bigger and better things. Who knows? Who is next? Got to keep him looking strong, though. Yeah, but he he's is sin- he is sitting there on probably a five or six win streak right now. He's 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 taken out, I guess, only members of that uh, nightmare family. It was him, <laughs> yeah. Dustin, a couple weeks ago, Brock Anderson, all these people. Well, after that, we get FTR taking on Sting and Darby Allen, and huge pop for the legend Sting. Uh, who had a nice little little variation on the face paint tonight? Yeah, they're doing Kinda like a, doing little a little combo type between the two of them. Yeah, a little little bit of both. Uh, so you know he looked good, but uh, he left the shirt on when he wrestled this time. Well, remember last he takes time it he off, took it off he, uh, for special occasions. Maybe pay per view was like, oh, I got to work out extra hard for the pay per view. <laughs> but in between, then nope. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, match was solid. Uh, FTR tried to sneak a chair in the corner, but. They are the ones that get in. They get they get thrown into it instead, and uh, Sting hits the Scorpion Deathlock, uh, and they tap out. So, the crowd's happy. Baby faces win. Oh, Sting was the star of the show. Uh, yeah, he got yeah. He actually got like the big the big offense, the big win. He did a lot of the work. He did you know he did a <laughs> lot of his big spots and all everything that Sting does now is just like designed to make or like all these matches are designed to make him look good. <laughs> and to make the crowd cheer, because uh, sometimes yeah. that's all you want, right? And he he holds up his end of the bargain, okay. so that's all we can ask. Hey, man, at age sixty-two, wow, sixty-two. <laughs> well, that brings us to the main event of the evening, but not literally because they taped a two-hour rampage after this. <laughs> for the sake of this show, main event. Uh, we got Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, defending that woman's title against Ruby Soho. So right off the bat, this is just great. I mean, main event spot in front of 20,000. This is pretty nice. Pretty nice for these women. Uh, and the crowd, like I said, during that promo, they were the same here. Just split, cheering for both women. Not really booing anyone at all. Uh, and yeah, just a bunch of nice back and forth, chain wrestling, fast pace. Uh yeah, Ruby hits a big senton. Baker, <laughs> Baker hits the uh, air raid crash off the second rope for a big near fall. And then she just starts slamming, or she slams Ruby into the steel steps, hits a curb stomp, but Ruby kicks out of that. And Ruby hits her finisher, which they're now calling the No Future. So, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she hits the No Future, but then Rebel jumps in the ring. So Ruby has to nail her with the no future, but then Jamie Hayter jumps in, hits Ruby with uh, something from the other side. That allows Baker to get Ruby in the lockjaw. So Ruby taps out. Britt retains, but with a lot of help. With a lot of help. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, of course, of course. She, she, you know, she's going to win. Probably the right call, but damn, great call to have them in the main event of the show. The crowd yeah, was the crowd, in, loves the Ruby. crowd was they into really... everything on this show. And yeah. so, you know, really highlighting that women's division, you know, in that main event spot, it gives it it gives it that little boost. Uh and the crowd yeah. is so stoked on Ruby Soho. Why? I don't really know. Uh She's good. Yeah, She's yeah, good. yeah, but I don't remember this <laughs> as her reaction coming out of WWE. I think people would just were like they knew they're like Ruby's better than. Oh, Bigfoot okay. Girl. So it was a big. We know you're better than this, and we don't yeah. see it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. That that's that's fair too because, I I I mean I was saying that a few weeks ago. You know, this woman has wrestled Charlotte at pay per views for the title, <laughs> and at, yeah. she wasn't used. You know? She was one of the one of the few chosen to wrestle Ronda Rousey. In she wrestled she, like title, six right? people have wrestled Ronda Rousey, and yeah, Ruby so. Soho was one of them. So yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And where's Sarah Logan? Um, I, uh, <laughs> that was, was the actually, entire episode. She was actually backstage. I told <laughs> I, I, I told you that she was backstage. Um, or was that at all out? That was all out. Yeah, when she okay, on, yeah. at her premiere. Um, yes. but that was all of our all elite wrestling um action for the break uh, or sorry for the week, and mm-hmm. I guess this would probably be a good time to take a break. 
Yeah, let's take a break and then jump on to the other side. We'll come back with some WWE action because, of course, we have uh, Extreme Rules this weekend. So stick around. Back here, part two of the show, Shoot Brothers After Dark. Uh, and what we mean by that is not the Shoot Brothers after, like, uh, you know, into into the nighttime. No, this is Shoot Brothers after episodes of AEW Dark. <laughs> uh, so what, <laughs> what happens with, is, you know, the, the episode, those episodes go live on YouTube and then we go live right after. <laughs> as long as we don't record this show during Dark, we're fine. We're always after. Ah, yo, 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 you know what, Mike? I'm watching Dark sometimes. Shoot me. Well, we're recording. Sometimes I'm. Wa- <laughs> yes, I just that's wanna- all I'm saying. Yeah, sometimes I have dark elevation on uh, in the ba- <laughs> in the background. Uh, just sometimes, Paul White got a big win this week. <laughs> he fought. <laughs> yeah, it was. What? Uh, yeah, he was in a three-on-one handicap match. <laughs> against three who the fuck knows who they are. Uh, <laughs> Why does he even need that? I guess bump his records up. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. He, he was in three random matches against three people. <laughs> I heard I've, nothing about it at all. I've so never not. heard of who, who are like only on Dark and they only lose. Mm-hmm. But hey, that's why Dark's there, baby. That's why Dark's there. No more all the wrestling talk because uh, if I'm being honest, there's no point anymore. We've moved past that. We have to move past that and move on to more pressing matters. The uh, extreme, the horror show from Extreme Rules is live this weekend. Uh, no horror show. It's no not- horror show, but the exact same colors and font. So I don't know why they kind of gave <laughs> gave up one. <laughs> and only one, only one match with a stipulation. So with an actual uh. extreme rule. I and, yeah. and and it is an extreme rules match. I mean, Weird, I guess eh? they only yeah, I guess they only owe you one, right? No, they owe yes, they owe you, they owe you like a whole. <laughs> wasn't there a wasn't there an extreme rules like a few years ago where every single match was stipped? It was yeah, when we had like Alexa. It was like Alexa Bliss on a pole, and then we had uh, <laughs> yeah. we had it was like Seth and Becky against uh, Corbin and Lacey. And then we had, uh, you know, shit happens here. Shit happens. What was the horror show last year? Was that the Eye for Eye match? Well, Rollins yeah. So we had Eye for we <laughs> we had a classic Eye for an Eye, classic Eye for an Eye match. Uh, and then we also yeah. had the uh, Bray Braun Swamp Fight. Oh, was that? Ugh, it feels like that was so much longer ago. Cause that was like the first time we saw Alexa associated in any way. With well, uh, yeah, that was July. So they did push their calendar back. Oh, yeah, so it right. has they been more it. than one year. Yeah. That's um, why it feels longer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> either way, Extreme Rules is coming. We know what we're building to. Uh, so we kicked the show off. Smackdown with the Bloodline coming out. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for Smackdown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. They used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just Smackdown Live. Reigns and Heyman do all the talking here and just talk about the upcoming Universal title match, which will be against the demon, Finn Balor. Uh, and if he gets through him, he'll be facing Brock Lesnar at Crown Jewel. They officially announced. Crown, we're going to Saudi, baby. You know, I'm. I always look forward to heading over to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, October something or other. Uh, but then the brand new WWE champion, Mr. Big E, comes out to interrupt everything, and crowd super hyped, chanting, "You deserve it." He just goes face to face with Roman, but then Balor comes out because uh, we got a tag match, and it's just Finn and Big E taking on the Usos and. Yeah, fun. the crowd was hot. Everyone was having fun. Eventually, Balor and Big E hit their finishers, and uh, they get the pin, and they win. Yeah, the big <laughs> pin. Um, yeah, we've done this before, too, where somebody wins on Raw. Like, either the Universal Champion wins or the WWE Champion wins, and then they show up on the other one's show. Like, I gotta say, Big E... 
Well, I don't yeah, know so where is, this. Where does this fall within? This is the, gray area because I mean, he was a SmackDown superstar yes. who won the WWE title. Yes, which was a Raw title, but I mean, the titles have flip flop brands many times. So I mean, is is the title property of SmackDown? Is Biggie property of Raw? It's all very. I mean, there is no real. Hard rule. Yes, there. So. Well, we're making it. We're making it. God damn it! Because in the official history books of the Shoop Brothers, Big E, you just used one of your brand to brand invitationals. I'm calling it right now. That's fine. That's fine. Because uh, within a mere weeks, we have the draft coming up. So this will I all know. be reset. It is almost season three of WWE. Maybe he knew. He's like, all right, might as well get these in. Well, before my thing, before they expire. It's almost, these season, three. Go bad. It's almost season three of WWE. We will, of course, mm-hmm. cover uh, on draft night. We will cover all of the uh, all of the brands that have been crossed and their specific nights. So uh, we'll see. We shall see. Uh, in the meantime, we get Rick Boogs Boogs. taking on Robert Rude. Rudes. Uh, (laughs) And Boogs, you know, every, every week just shows off a little bit more. He's got those nice amateur wrestling skills, just suplexing, tossing Rude all over the ring. Eventually hits the Boogs cruise to get the win. Um. And then afterwards, he grabs his guitar to celebrate, but Apollo Crews and Aziz beat him down, cut a promo on Nakamura. He wants an Intercontinental title rematch, and I don't think anyone else does. Cause yeah, because I, mean, I, cause I forgot. This was <laughs> this was like three things ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this yeah, was Apollo mania. Was really this is off. old fucking news at this point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Happy Corbin takes on Kevin Owens. Um I refuse to call him that. Okay. (laughs) Well, Corbin (laughs) attacks Owens during the entrance, and he just beats him down and leaves, so we don't get the match. So no one has to call him that. Okay, thank God. Uh, But then Seth Rollins comes out, and I've got to say, this might be one of my favorites so far of his suits. This was just like all, not everyone agreed. Some people didn't, but this was just like a super shiny silver metal Tin Man looking thing. Just, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, even Don Cherry was out there tweeting that damn, this looks good. <laughs> the crowd chanted, you look stupid, but I loved it. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if, if we've seen a suit twice in the, the like he's, yeah, who's he's doing the costumes? Who's, who's doing the costumes back there? Like, are these? Does Seth I feel Rollins like that's coming out of his pocket. All of these suits, you think so? I feel like so. I feel like why they're not going to pay for twenty suits? Huh? They're all custom tailored, fit to him. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe it's not that expensive. He just goes to Fabric Land and picks something and takes it to a tailor. <laughs> Fabric Land. Anyways, <laughs> talks about beating Edge in that classic they had the other week and. How Edge had to be taken out on a stretcher. and He rambles on a bit. Says he's not done with Edge. Uh, so I guess we're having one final, uh, I don't know, TLC match maybe. They got to do something to up, up the ante. Yeah, it needs to be a, like a little more important. Yeah. They've each got to win. The second, yeah, so got to do something. Okay. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we, maybe we can work on <laughs> something there. Then we get uh, women's tag team action here. Zelina Vega and Carmella taking on Liv Morgan and Tony Storm. Ah, uh, this the, was the match we were supposed to get. This was the 9-11 this match. This was, was the canceled. 9-11 match, <laughs> folks. Three uh, towers fell, four women going at three it. Three towers? Hey, amen. Okay. Uh, nice to see Tony fighting. You not know about anytime. Tower 7? Tower 7. Tower yeah. 9? Oh Tower. man! Oh man! Okay! 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 <laughs> all right! All right! All right! All right! All right! <laughs> all right! All right! All right! All right! Okay! Now, ladies. I say folks. now, ladies, because <laughs> we got four ladies in the ring. Tony Storm, who we very she's been called up for like three or four months, but uh, we this is like her second match. Um, yeah, I've been, but she looks great. Yeah, sure. Former NXT UK Women's Champ. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyways, uh, they're all fighting. Carmella gets kicked face first in the turnbuckle, and she just. Rolls to the floor, screaming, grabbing her nose. And she just walks off and gets counted out. Just like that. Not a real injury, just a bad finish. Yeah, that was a, that was a bad finish. <laughs> it's, it's like, count, is it like uh, count out after two minutes is just like mm-hmm. a bad sentence. <laughs> count out after 
you know, 45 minutes, you know, then you're like, shit, okay. <laughs> Count out after two. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Uh, then afterwards, I guess there was this little promo from Finn telling us about the demon. He's a manifestation. Yeah, he's a he's rage a, inside. Yeah, him. he's like, oh, this is something I do. Yeah, you know. That I was, can't control th- it, mate. It's a little, it's, it's like a wee leprechaun it's inside a, me. It's a little leprechaun you know. inside me, and I go to the end of the rainbow. Classic <laughs> demon shit, um, which is what we like, I guess, right? It's what we want. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, the, the demon is such a rare occasion that it's going to be fun to see him. No now, what. I think the last time we may have seen the, the demon Finn Balor was when uh, he almost, where it was supposed to, remember, it was like supposed to be him and Sister Abigail. But then oh, yeah. it ended up being him and AJ. Remember? Because everyone had the mumps. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? <laughs> remember and when Kurt everyone... Angle joined the Shield? Yeah, remember when Kurt Angle was in the Shield because everyone had the mumps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a weird... A weird what a outbreak. weird time in wrestling that was. Yeah. No, this, this I remember the same thing happened in the NHL that year. A bunch of guys. Oh, Crosby yeah? Crosby and a couple guys. Got oh, the, shit. Something must have been going around. Some groupie that these guys were... <laughs> Some party happened with Some all these party guys. Some uh, half happened. All the wrestlers <laughs> and NHLers. Uh, anyway, it's backstage. Naomi approaches Sonya Deville. And uh, she's losing her patience now. It's been weeks. And she just says, when is my match? Uh, Sonya. Uh, t- and Sonya just says, time's running out this week. Talk to me next week. So Naomi's, and Naomi's just like, I don't know what your issue is. I don't care. Because I've been here longer than you. I've accomplished way more than you. So you're acting like I don't deserve to be here. Uh, I'm a two-time SmackDown Women's Champ. So she's got a good point. And as she's talking, she's like backstoning you into a corner, getting right in her face. She says, I'm going to get my match. Now, do you feel that? And I thought this was a great promo from Naomi. Yeah. I liked it. It really was. A lot of fire. She wants to go out there. She wants to perform. Yeah. She has a good point, man. Two-time. What have you done, Sonya? Uh, I like Sonya. I want to mm. see her. Maybe this is going to finally lead to... Sonya getting back in the Sonya returning to the ring. Yeah, we've been we've been uh waiting for it. We we're supposed to have that hair versus hair match that never we, happened. Yeah, like we said earlier in the show, that's really been a very rare gimmick these past decade. Yeah. Wrestling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh and then we find out Naomi was fined five thousand dollars for this incident. Wow. So actions. Five uh, grand. Is that, a pro- hey. is that approximately how much Jimmy Uso was fined every time he gets <laughs> fucking caught? The sad thing is, yeah, it probably might be more. Who knows? At least, at least Naomi was fined kayfabe dollars, where yeah. Jimmy Uso is charged American dollars. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> <laughs> fucking drunk. <laughs> this means Naomi's gonna win the title next week. Amen. <laughs> yeah, give it honor. Keep the bloodline strong. Uh, then we get Dominic Mysterio, rear Mysterio <laughs> taking mm-hmm. on Sami Zayn uh, for what the second or third time now. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, match was going well, high flying stuff. Crowds having fun. Dominic hits the six one nine. He goes for the frog splash, but Ray is just yelling at him. He's like, "Do it! Hurry faster!" But he wasn't fast enough. Sammy gets the knees up to block the sm- block the splash, and uh, yeah, cradles Dom gets the three count. So they're this slowly building, you know. Ray's over, over coaching his son. I just want dad. you to be a good wrestler, son. Yeah, he's 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 uh, he's the kid who <laughs> he's the coach and the father on uh, the little league team. You know, <laughs> your dad's the coach. You know, one wants their dad to be. Yeah, the coach, yeah. The they? father son's gonna split. You know, <laughs> um, God, what was Dom's? What was the first feud? That he had like last year? Yeah, like no, when he like came into professional wrestling. Who was he going up uh, with? I forget who he fought first. Was it? Yeah, me too. I don't know. It was like a year ago, wasn't it, when he came in? It feels like, like approximately a year ago. Uh so Murphy was banging his sister. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh there was that. Yeah, so well, okay, pretty much, pretty much what I was getting ready. Maybe it was somewhere around Seth Murphy whatever it was. Whatever I was getting ready to say though was that uh yeah, it it doesn't feel like Dominic's had a had a, had a had a feud since Murphy banging his sister. So it's it's nice to see Dominic, you know, being a person and doing other stuff. Yeah. And uh, he's been getting a lot of dark. He's been getting a lot of dark matches with Cena, uh, too. What? 
Yeah, oh, yeah. John Cena. Yeah, John Cena's uh, teaming up with the Mysterios. They're getting a lot of dark matches. Uh, you know, at, at their at their kind of Over super shows and yeah, uh, at, well, after the show and shit like that. Yeah, not a bad guy to rub elbows with. Amen. <clears throat> but uh, we didn't mention it, but we are in Knoxville, Tennessee. So uh, the mayor of Knox County, WWE legend Kane, comes out. No, I didn't us. know that those were the same things. <laughs> I don't know Knoxville, if they are. Maybe Knox I'm just County. saying. <laughs> Maybe like Knox County's part of Knoxville. Something like uh, that. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, he comes out to introduce us to Knoxville's own Bianca Belair, who just gets a ton of love from the hometown crowd. And you can see Bianca getting emotional a bit. And she just kind of talks a bit about her life and accomplishing her dreams. Uh and then Mayor Kane lifts up a sheet to reveal the key to the city. <laughs> wow. Classic gimmick. Classic mayor gimmick. Classic mayor <laughs> giving away that key to the city to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. So uh, presents it to Bianca. She gives him a hug. Thanks, everyone. And uh, she leads them in singing something called Rocky Top, which I don't know, but they all seem to know it. Must be, I don't know, their, their school chant. Or <laughs> yeah, who the fuck knows? Uh, so then Becky Lynch comes out singing and the crowd boos her and she's got another great jacket and obnoxious glasses going on this week. Her and Seth just went shopping, I think. Uh, <laughs> they went to the uh, obnoxious douche store. <laughs> Kanye West owns it. Uh, <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, Bianca says, like, why are you even here? And uh, Becky just says, SummerSlam was my night. Extreme Rules will be my night. But tonight's your night. So I came to shake your hand. And she extends it. Bianca hesitates, but then she accepts. She doesn't let go, though. She pulls Becky in, hoists her up for the KOD, but Becky escapes. And she hits the manhandle slam. So she stands tall over Bel Air to end the show. And we're pushing this as the finisher. No longer, uh, you know, the... Uh, yeah, the arm was, breaker. The, the arm bar, whatever it was or, called. Yeah, what they call it, the disarm her. Disarm her, yes. Uh, <laughs> feels like we've kind of, you know, moved, give me, you know, we've, uh, we have a new uh, finisher, a new gimmick, and yeah, the heel turn almost feels complete now. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think they've done a good job. I'm really looking forward to the match, so. We'll, we'll see. see. That'll be something that that'll was... go down at uh, Extreme Rules, probably, right? Yeah. And that's how they close SmackDown. So. Amen, brother. SmackDown's over. Uh, let's move across the board then while we uh, build up to our Extreme Rules. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. <laughs> that's right. Um, because uh, we've got a new champ. New WWE champ, baby. Uh, part of the reunited New Day, who come out to start the show. Uh, yeah, so Biggie's there. Everyone's chanting for Biggie. You deserve it. And he cuts a promo. Thanks everyone supporting him. And you know the New Day all these years. And uh, there was a nice little line talking about. I forget what exactly what he said. He was like the angels watching above, like mentioning Brody. The crowd starts chanting for Brody at one point. So yeah, nice he said he said there. something. He said something to that. Yeah, he did yeah, shed shed to, light to the late great Brody Lee. Yeah, the crowd picked up, or half of them did. I mean, not everyone knows Brody. They know Luke Harper. So either way, nice little thing. And uh, then he just hypes up their big match for tonight when the New Day faces the Bloodline in a six man tag. So I the mean, Bloodline. <laughs> Get your pencil out. Uh, I know you want to count these numbers. Oh, uh... you know we're <laughs> counting this shit. Roman, what are you doing here, bud? You got your own fucking show to dominate. You don't got to show yeah. up here, bud. Take your little, take your little Alkies. Hey, Usos too. Take, Usos too. Take the Alkies. Go home. Was Paul <laughs> Was Paul Heyman on this one? I, I might have missed that. Uh, yeah, he, he probably came out with them. but he was. Because uh, all three y'all... Are charged with a <laughs> uh, a uh, brand to brand invitational. It's their first one, but you know, they're just so you know. But we must now. Here's where we get technical. Ooh. Once you show up on Raw, you're free to do whatever you want the whole night. 
as many matches as you want. Right? Yes, yeah, you're you're there. You're in the building. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah, you, you're in the it building. It might come into play. They do whatever you want. Play. You're in the building. Yeah. Uh, so they're all in the building here, and this we just jump right into this match: New Day versus Bloodline. Uh, yeah, pretty good six man tag here. You know, eventually it comes down. Big E and Reigns have the big standoff. The crowd's pumped for that. And, uh, yeah, Big E's just on a roll, but Reigns escapes. Usos attack. Xavier dives in. But then outside the ring, Bobby Lashley comes up, and he just starts beating people all over the place. Uh, takes out Big E. Takes out Kofi. He doesn't care. He's taking out everyone. Uh, and, yeah, all this commotion allows Roman to hit the spears on Xavier. Get the three count. Uh but then after Lashley spears Rain for good measure, and I don't know. Lashley just goes crazy. Everyone's getting speared. Big E gets speared through a barricade. So they make Lashley still look strong here. I guess they want to keep him as a top contender still. Oh, he's just still he's still a strong boy. Yeah, he's a strong boy. And then afterwards, he's all fired up backstage, and they end up booking a triple threat for later with these three guys: Lashley, Roman, uh, Big E. So. That's why I brought it up. Roman's working double duty, but he's getting his money's worth. He's getting his money's worth. No, I think this also <laughs> came up once before. Uh, yeah, this it's not the first or last specific time situation. Dressed. Yeah, not the first <laughs> or last time. Oh well. Oh. Um, then we get. This is not the first or last time that we make it this time. <laughs> uh, the bubblegum hair Skip. dream. Eva Marie. <laughs> Well, okay, Dewdrop wins once again. Hey, Dewdrop! <laughs> Virgil's favorite. But you know what? The crowd likes her a little bit. I mean, I think mostly the kids, but she comes down, she does like a little weird dance, which is, I don't know, it's not my favorite, but people were kind of into it. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, this week in particular was a moment where I kind of realized, so and later on we get a, uh, a Charlotte Flair Alexa Bliss promo. This was one of the things where I was like, there is a big difference between the AEW women's division and the WWE women's division. Like, I can, I, this, and this Monday Night Raw was a great example of the difference between the two. In what way? One is made, like you just said, the kids are loving it. The kids are dancing. The kids <laughs> are having fun. One is made for kids, like, like young girls, and one's not. And that's the that's the biggest difference of what's happening right now. One's trying to sell you a fucking doll, and one's saying banging some dude in the back. Uh, <laughs> it's just diff- different ways, think, yeah. di- just different it ways does. to present the same product. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This is yeah. this was no, one of those episodes good... where I noticed it more than other times, you know. And I think it shows in uh, in those demos, which Jericho loves. The the AEW is a much more heavily male audience. It's like. 80 20 split where WWE is like 60 40 I think and that's the thing and you know Mike you and I've never been to an AEW show so we don't know what what it looks like kind of around what the crowd is like what the vibe is uh you yeah. know and, and until until that happens Tony if T- but, you know, TK sure, if you're I mean, out there uh you could sell at the ACC um definitely. oh definitely in a heartbeat you could do two night uh, do, but, do I mean, rampage wrestling. And, uh... yeah do a double grand slam Why not? uh hat trick for the hockey, hmm. dude, call it a hat trick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, wrestling, everybody, diversify. That's, Everyone's yeah, welcome. No, I, There's I'm a little saying, thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We'll see. We'll, yeah, see, yeah. we'll, no, we'll, I mean, we'll hear more from Alexa Bliss later, though. We're not gonna watch. Uh, we're not gonna see people bleeding, women bleeding, anytime on WWE television. No, absolutely not. No, because they need matches. to have nice photos to put on their Instagram accounts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they can be viewed in one particular light. Uh, well, that's their discretion. Amen. Uh, we do have more matches coming up. Yeah, like you said, so triple threat later on in the night. Paul Heyman uh, was there with Adam Pierce and uh, Sonya Deville. And he was like, huh? Um, but in the <laughs> actual ring, uh, RK Bro, AJ Styles, Omos, everybody's there because it's time... Uh, for to to write our latest chapter in the Raw Tag Team Championship novel, Randy yeah. Orton taking on AJ Styles, a match we've seen for years at this point now, even at Mania. I think these guys fought at Mania once. Uh, yeah, probably. It's been a while. AJ, time flies. He's now been with the company like five, six years already. Wow. 
And he continues. But, he hasn't lost a step. Hasn't lost a beat. No. I mean, same with Randy. These are two of the best on the brand. Yeah. Uh, going at it. You're right. When, uh, when you're right, you're right, Mike. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, we just get a good, you know, traditional style wrestling match. Uh, at one point, Orton looks like he's going to go for the running punt, uh, to the head, but then Omos trips him up from behind and then the ref turns around and is like, oh, no, 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 you can't fool me. You're out of here. <laughs> so, uh, he takes him out, but on the way, Omos attacks Riddle. So he's kind of out as well. So the match continues. Uh, Randy gets cut at one point near his eye, uh, and then AJ hits a nice lion salt. He goes for the phenomenal forearm. Uh, but then he turns around, takes a swing at Riddle. And then he goes to jump up again for the phenomenal forearm. But then Orton goes to jump and catch him with the RKO. But they both just kind of stop themselves. And then they point at each other like the Spider-Man meme. Corey Graves <laughs> even said that. But yeah, they just both faked each other out. They're like, ah! Uh, but then Orton ends up getting the better of AJ. He hits the draping DDT, hits the RKO, gets the win. So, nice match. I like that call back there where they kind of, you know, they they knew that they already did the leaping RKO, but then they faked it out. And yeah, it was cool. Yeah, you can tell AJ Styles, I'm sure, and God, what's the point of even saying good things about AJ Styles anymore? You know, it's almost like, <laughs> yeah, we get it. He's in that category. He's in that upper. We that, get it. Yeah. He's one of the best. And for me, the last few little months maybe of Monday Night Raw for me and AJ Styles has been match length. I feel like we've gotten a lot, and this card kind of gave us a few too of short feeling matches. And every AJ Styles match feels like, I'm like, wow, this there was an arc to this, and it was probably about 10 minutes. And this, yeah. ma- and this match was no different. AJ Styles is given, like, the amount of time the main eventers or the champions are, even though, you know, he's sort of just kind of doing his thing as the Raw, in, in, with the Raw tag scene. Yeah, and he's a guy, he can never lose his... His luster. Like, he can spend a year in this tag scene and then instantly jump back and be a... Uh, yeah, I, l- yeah, honestly, if, like, next week was Big E, AJ Styles for the WWE Championship, okay. Yeah. Great. It'd on be, board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on I'd board. Right. Let's, exactly. Let's exactly. go for it. It's going to be <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. He's one of those guys. He's, He's a made man. A made man. Amen. <sighs> then we go to Nia Jax taking on Shayna Baszler. Uh, hopefully, this can be the big blow-off that we've been waiting. The big Fe- blow-off. <laughs> Fuck. Feels like years now, this tag team. Yeah, been. sure. Let's just say it they've is. Survived, they've survived the pandemic. They've survived the releasing. They've survived everything this time. <laughs> they've survived every uh, little bit of adversity. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, yeah, this will be the big the big ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, they, yeah, they're, they're fighting. They're arguing. Naya's just in control and like, yeah, see how easy this is, but... Shayna fights back, just starts nailing her with big knee strikes, massive kicks to the head. Uh, and then she locks in the Kirafuda clutch. Naya falls down, passes out. So Shayna wins. But uh, she's not done there. She then just starts hitting Naya with some more just stiff kicks to the head. And, uh, then she takes her outside the ring, puts her hand in the steel steps, and stomps on it. And stomps on it again, and Nia just starts screeching and squealing like I've never heard in her life. And we've heard her screeching squeal a couple times. (laughs) Yeah. She sounded like, this sounded like just like a slaughtering of an animal or something. This was, I mean, I give her credit. She sold it. Maybe it was too much, though. It was pretty, uh, yeah. Wow. She was was into it, though. She was. She was. Uh, I agree. And then Shayna Ah! walks off, so. Ah! (laughs) Yeah. ah! Hopefully this is, I mean, yeah, hopefully this is the breakup. Come on. She broke her wrist. This is the breakup. It's over. I'm telling you. Vince, it's over. <laughs> God, well, I mean, <sighs> Vince, he doesn't listen to the show because we've been saying that for how many months, years now? <laughs> he doesn't listen to any show. He yeah. doesn't do anything but <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sure. Why the hell not? This was a two-minute match. We spent more time talking about the match than the actual match length <laughs> itself. Coming up next, the debuting team. Of Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo, former enemies united in the name of family to take on Mustafa Ali and Mansoor in some tag team action. You know, despite the babyfaces' experience in teaming together, 
It was the other two who seemed to dominate uh, the most of the action. Uh, yeah, are they the ones that are cousins, Carrillo Garza? Yeah, who knows? Was it? Does it matter? One of them. I don't. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, the match was fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eventually, Carrillo gets Ali in this nice submission, and then Garza runs in, drop kicks him to the head at the same time, and that gives him the three count. So yeah, the 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 guys that we haven't seen in a long time beat the team that's been on Raw for a couple months. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you're going to Saudi. You think you'd want to build up? We're Mansoor going a little to bit. Saudi, baby. Mansoor. He's like, yeah. I mean, they could and Mansoor and Ali fighting for the tag titles in Saudi. That could get a big reaction. And then they could win, and then they would see um, Omas and be like, "Ooh, Ooh he's yeah. so big." Because <laughs> that's what we're supposed to think, right? Every time we see Omas, we're supposed to go, "Ooh." I mean, he is pretty damn big. Yeah, I, I know. Bet but... The first time, if we ever, well, yeah, the, when we see him. And our next WWE show, I yeah. think we'll be like, damn, he's pretty. That's a good big. point. I don't <laughs> know, I don't know, but it, I, I, I feel like I'd be more impressed with with a guy like Brian Cage, because that's uh, just width. I've HGH? seen, I've seen height before. <laughs> I need width. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, Omos is pretty. He's pretty. He's they're, all, they're, they're all big boys. They're he's all in better shape than Kali and Andre the Giant. Amen. Andre had a oh, bit of a yeah. gut there. Of course. When you drink three cases of beer a day, that kind of happens. But, yeah, Omos isn't uh, drinking 72 beers in an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley come out to talk about Connor's cure. And they want to dedicate their match tonight because they're getting a tag title match. But uh, Ripley really seemed uh, kind of like shaken up. I guess she, you know, she was touched or she spent some time with these kids because she was kind of stumbling a bit here. But not in a bad way, like in a... Yeah, she was very soft. In a, uh, it meant a lot to her way. Yeah, like a very serious tone. So, yeah, nothing oh. nothing bad here. So, uh, of course, I mean, they're dedicating the match to the sick kids. You don't want to have them lose, right? I mean, I mean, <laughs> as soon as I said that, I, I, I said to myself, <laughs> I, or I think I kind of wrote down here, new champs, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we bring out Natalia Tamina. Still waiting on Shotzi and Tegan to get their shot. Because they beat him like what happened? Yeah, what happened yeah. to Shot uh, to Shotzi? I don't. They're just driving around that what tank happened? backstage. You, you used to be on Shotzi watch, and now we haven't seen her in a few weeks now. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, much like a lot of those matches earlier, not very much time here. We just kind of rush through things. Uh, Ripley picks up Tamina, hits her with a riptide outside the ring. Back inside the ring, Natalia goes for a sharpshooter, but Nikki reverses it into an inside cradle. Gets a three count. In two minutes and 32 seconds, Dude, we have new tag team Every champions. single week, Monday Night Raw <laughs> is a series of two-minute matches, and then <laughs> that's approximately that. Yeah, okay, okay, For okay. For a title okay. change, it's especially. I especially, know, yeah. and it sucks that we just don't care about these belts enough, right? It, isn't, it feels like not since Bailey and Sasha held these. Yeah, because they were I mean, on a nice it, little kick with Oscar and Kyrie Sane, and then Bailey Sasha, yeah. and then it was like Oscar Charlotte for some there. reason. Bliss Cross. Yeah, that's when it started. There, yeah, Oscar Charlotte was when it started. There to was come down a, a bit. little bit of a run where it was like, oh, this is fun, and yeah. then yeah, I think it was Tamina and Talia who won them, but too late. They, we were. Yeah, it was like yeah. it needs to be at Mania, and then it didn't happen at Mania. And we're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess we're going exactly. one further. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, they feel flat. I mean, to be honest, I mean, both of these women's tag championships feel flat between this and NXT. Uh, but hey, it has to happen, right? There was no 24-7 action on this fucking show, so that was great. Yeah. I mean, at the very least, I mean, I guess you can justify it because Nikki and Rhea Ripley are both women's champions within the past few months that's so true be yeah they the are like, actual like champions you know yeah so i mean maybe they will elevate these belts a bit uh you know whether you like nikki's gimmick or not they've been featuring her featuring her almost every week so and they're and they're <laughs> and they're not calling her nikki ash yet which sucks yeah i know even though people in promo and you know what sucks we got rid of her name and now carrying cross does nothing <laughs> because we all know while yeah. we all know she went to Nikki Ash so she wasn't Nikki Cross so we didn't confuse with Karrion Cross. Yeah. We haven't seen Karrion Cross for what, two weeks now? Maybe? Well, not wrestling. He's doing his little 
backstage thing. Yeah, no one, get, no one cares. Nothing special. No one, no one cares. cares. We're just waiting for Charlotte. Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlotte, because coming up no. next, we do yeah, see exactly. Alexa Bliss welcoming our queen, my queen, your and queen. Your queen. She's your, she's uh, all of our queens. Charlotte Flair, uh, our Raw Women's Champion, down to the ring for a special edition, I guess, of Alexis Playground because they have a match at Extreme Rules this Sunday um, where Charlotte Flair made a lot of good points. She was like, yo, can I get like the actual old Alexa Bliss back who didn't just steal people's gimmicks and was an actual wrestler? And I was like, yeah, can we get the old Alexa Bliss back who doesn't just steal people's gimmicks and actually wrestle and do shit? Um, you know, and then Alexa Bliss kind of comes back, you know, uh, Charlotte, you're not you're not you're not even uh, who are you without a championship to even keep you relevant? And of course, yeah, eventually, uh... eventually things uh, go back and forth and uh, divulge into a brawl. Well, I mean, there's a couple things as well. Uh... You miss the crowd chanting, we want Charlie, no, uh, <laughs> because Charlotte did not bring the doll with her. These dolls are over, whether you whether you love them or hate them. That's the worst part of it. These dolls, they were chanting, we want Charlie, a character has been around like two weeks. Oh, uh, no. Af- so luckily- af- after, after the Thunderdome artificial crowd technology, I just don't know if I can trust them anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I think the crowd's hot. The crowd's hot. <laughs> For these dolls. Christ. <laughs> so we get the dolls. Charlie's there. So we uh, get the dolls. The crowd Mike, did you hear she what you just that doll said? Out? Mike, you just said, so we've got the dolls. That was a you line talked about po- <laughs> that came out of your fucking mouth. Well, you talked about pop of the year earlier. When she pulls out Charlie, <laughs> the crowd starts <laughs> chanting for Charlie. <laughs> so, yes. That was great, but no. <laughs> like you, like you said, Charlotte doesn't want that. She wants the old bliss. Uh, and then they kind of, I like they kind of went off script for a second because, uh, yeah, Bliss is like you don't have anything. You're just nothing without the title. And then the crowd woos, and then Bliss is like, that's not even originally yours. So and then Charlotte, and then, yeah, uh, Charlotte says, originality. "You want to talk about shit that's not yours?" <laughs> and then yeah. I'm like, so "That was a nice little. That felt natural. Both of you." <laughs> So, yeah, I gave you Charlie because you're a self-centered, narcissistic bitch, and uh, you deserve happiness still. Anyways, eventually they come to blows, like you said. Charlotte has to take off her heels to hit the big boot. She picks up Charlie and tears the poor doll's doll's head off to a chorus of boos. And then she goes towards Lily, but Alexa jumps on her, nails Charlotte with the big DDT. Bliss stands tall with Lily. Ah, uh, yeah, Sunday's match, uh, God, like, yeah, I mean, so, Alexa Bliss has been doing this whole thing, and we haven't seen her actually wrestle, right? She said, money in the bank, she kind of sat in the corner, and then got a bunch of ladders piled on her. I feel like Alexa Bliss is a very good wrestler, and we don't see her wrestle. Uh, so yeah. hopefully uh, this can be forward. one of those things where it's like, yo, the doll fucking aside... I'm actually really good at this. And then she does that. Yeah. I don't know. And you know you were you were asking for, or Charlotte was you you and you and Charlotte were both asking for the old Alexa Bliss here. And I think we saw more of the old Alexa in this promo than we have in a long time. Like when she was actually talking to Charlotte and saying those things about her and you know, not just uh playground loop stuff. Yeah, exactly. Not just that, like, hee-hee bullshit where you're like, I'm an adult. Just fucking talk to me like I'm an adult. Charlotte's just so pissed because literally nobody on Raw is up to her level. Like, I would be pissed too, right? Like, uh... Becky's on the other show. Bianca Belair's on the other show. Where's we'll Asuka? Come Sunday, who's you're on You're kind of like, level? what the fuck's the point? Like, I'm just now the best at this. Go to AEW, Charlotte, please. Come on. Come on, please. Yes, I hope she does. On uh, that would that would change the game. It would for both brands, both companies. Imagine that. When's her contract up? Can we get some of those hot rumors? <laughs> I don't know. Well, her fiance lives over in AEW, so exactly. Ric <laughs> Flair's always backstage at those uh, things. Him and Marco Stunt hanging out. Yeah. Well, Ric Flair's kind of, uh, I think, trying to hot duck down right He's now. He's on the outs. After some some dark side of the ring stuff going on. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, 
We don't even have to mention the 24-7 gaggle, do we? No. <laughs> we'll just move right on to Jeff Hardy taking on Sheamus because if Jeff wins, he gets added to the United States Championship match at Extreme Rules. So, hey, speaking of, I mean, he, he got bumped right back up from that gaggle. Uh, <laughs> Immediately. Uh, so, yeah, match was okay. Um, although a questionable decision early on, Sheamus uh, voluntarily removes his own face shield, which was a mistake because Jeff ends up smacking him pretty hard in that broken nose, and Sheamus started bleeding from it. So Yeah, whoops. I don't know. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was that pretty was dumb. Whoops. But, uh, uh, but the blood just fires him up, and he pounds on Hardy, goes for the bro kick, but then Jeff avoids, hits a twist of fate, goes for the swan tom bomb, Sheamus gets the knees up, picks up Jeff, but then Hardy hits a sunset flip, gets a three count. So Hardy is going to elimination, or uh, extreme rules. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Yeah, not really much, you know, not really much expectation that he can win on Sunday, you know, rather than he might just be there to eat a pin. Uh, yeah, he shouldn't. Uh... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sheamus, nose bleeding. That was my biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. The bloody nose. Uh, but that main event, the big triple threat, Big E, Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley. Uh, a lot of beef here. A lot of beef. <laughs> and that was what we got. Yeah, just hard hitting back and forth. Uh, Reigns' pants kept falling down. We got to see his red underwear. You never see that. <laughs> to match his red gauntlet. Yeah. I don't know if that was on purpose. If he wears gold underwear when he's got the gold gauntlet. I don't know. Hmm. But... Everyone had their little moments looking good. Uh, Big E hits the big ending on Reigns at one point, but Bobby breaks up the pin. He picks up Big E, slams through the announce table, goes back in the ring, get hits with a, gets hit with a Superman punch. So, uh, yeah, Reigns tries to hit a spear, but then Lashley hits a spear. Crowd's going wild, chanting, this is awesome. Eventually, Big E just fires up, hits the big ending on Reigns. He's got the match won, but then Lashley smacks Big E with a chair. To break up the pin, but there's no DQ. It's a triple threat. So uh, he just know he hits Big E over and over like a dozen chair shots here. Takes out the big man, but then he turns around right into a spear from Reigns, and that gives Roman the victory. Pretty good man. In a damn, I'd say pay per view quality. Pay per view quality just six yeah. days before the actual pay per view. Um, uh, even though two of these three guys aren't fighting at all on the paper, on the paper, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of weird that Big E's not booked. After I this guess it. Well, I mean, know. shit, that's how these things happen, right? Like, you know, it happens quickly, and then you have nothing to do. Um, yeah, of course. So Bobby Lashley's obviously going to be irate about losing his WWE Championship, understandably, right? So, um, you know, but he took his he took his eyes off of Reign and paid the price for it. You know, he he hasn't been aware of what's been going on over there on SmackDown for the last. <laughs> Um, but I mean, as a as a fellow spear user, he has to be always ready. The battle of the spears, wow. exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, and maybe these two guys will stay off of <clears throat> the Extreme Rules card. Maybe they won't. But yeah, this is about as fine as a WWE television match that we've seen. Yeah, that that you yeah. will ever yeah, see. Really. Good... <laughs> yeah. No, it's just a just a good main event. Amen. And that was all of Monday Night Raw. Let's move across because, oh my God, this show used to have, this should be so simple. NXT, what does it mean? I don't know, but it's some good wrestling. Go NXT, watch and see. Got a tap out a count out of one, two, three. So. NXT, baby, 2.0. We're uh, orange, blue, purple, green, pink. Uh, um, red, uh, dude. NXT it used to be a two-hour show with you know four matches. It, it felt very much so, kind of like booked, almost like a SmackDown. You know, it was like things made sense, they were concise, and now it's just all over the place. We got fourteen matches coming up um, this uh, this week. You know, but to start this week's episode of NXT 2.0, you know, some of the stars were in the ring. Um. Uh, Ciampa, Carmelo Hayes, Braun Brecker. Ciampa's putting over some of this new talent yeah, as, you know, officially the, the resident old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, just putting over the young guys, cutting a promo about his journey back. Uh, 900 days since he had to relinquish that title uh, without wow. losing it. So, uh, yeah, you know, he says NXT, we got a new coat of paint, but the passion's still here. Uh, and all this energy just has Cameron Grimes fired up. So he comes out, he says, Chompa, that championship title there is the rock of fuel that I need to go to the moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then LA Knight comes out, and then Pete Dunn comes out. So everyone brawls. Uh, but then out of everything, Chompa and Brun Breaker are the two men that stand tall. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> after last week, it felt like that dude's going to get a, a bit of a push of some kind. Yeah, he seems to be one of their uh, highly touted prospects coming up here. Yeah. Uh, but then we go to this uh, cruiserweight title match that we've been promised a long time ago. Uh, but due to medical issues. Well, anyways, we're finally getting it here. Kushida, Roddy Strong. Uh, yeah, he showed no sign of ailment here. Just classic Kushida doing the working over that arm, trying to get that hoverboard lock. But uh, Strong's got, you know, he's got like three or four guys, all of Diamond Mine at ringside, helping him out. They distract the ref, and yeah, it's just five on one pretty much at this point. So Roddy hits the big rising knee, followed by his uh, his suplex backbreaker to get the three count, and he wins the Cruiserweight Championship. Hey! Yeah, new champ. Yeah, new uh, new champ. Yeah, the um, you know, they competed at a high level. You know, probably probably deserved a main event spot, and uh, you know, maybe some more time. This was probably under ten minutes long. Uh, but you know, they're both technically focused. But yeah, I think the the bigger part, the biggest, the bigger thing is that Diamond Mind is a priority for this new NXT. Yeah. Um. So it was no surprise to see Roddy get the win there. Yeah, and then as he celebrates, this new fella, Grayson Waller, comes out, and he challenges him to defend the title next week. So we'll yeah, see that. Honestly, too many fuck, too many <laughs> new fucking people. Like I just can't oh, keep count. Uh, <laughs> this well, that's why it's two point oh. Oh my god! The relaunch. Uh, then we get another promo from Mister Italian American Tony D'Angelo. Just more talking about. You know, family, business. Nice back shot, though, in the background. A nice, beautiful bridge on the lake at night. Uh, The Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know. What's some sort of bridge? So, yeah, coming soon. Tony D'Angelo. Okay. We'll see you later, Tony. (laughs) And then we get Kaylee Ray taking on Amari Miller, who, uh, did this girl have a face tattoo? I couldn't tell. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She got... Uh, put in her place. <laughs> Kaylee hits the gory bomb, gets the win. She got a quick squash. Yeah, Kaylee Ray getting these wins. Raquel Gonzalez needs a new challenger. So anytime a woman, you know, kind of gets over, you're like, okay, is it you? We'll see. Yeah, yeah, they've been pushing Kaylee a bit these last little bit since yeah. he came in. Uh, let me get Trey Baxter taking on Dante Chen, who is noted to be the first ever. WWE superstar from Singapore. It's, uh, right. The card so far gives me big dark elevation vibes. <laughs> I did hear that this was like major headline news in Singapore. This guy appearing on WWE. Yeah, sure, but it just feels so, like we're kind of covering. An oh, I mean, the match itself was dark. another uh, poor yeah. debut. Yeah, the match itself was another quick nothing. Uh, Exactly, and in 90 seconds, what's the fucking yeah, point? he hits his little, the finisher, the one-winged, or the one-armed wing clipper kind of thing gets the win. Yeah. I don't know. That's all it was, yeah. Uh, there was a segment called Chase University, taught to us by Andre Chase. He was, uh, yeah, he just, he's just this condescending guy, law, uh, yeah, mocking people. <laughs> I don't know. Then there was Joe Gacy in the ring, cutting a promo about NXT. Says this ring is sacred. This is where we settle our differences. And starts talking about unity and tolerance. And I don't know. It didn't really get over. Crowd was chanting what? Because honestly, yeah, something. he was trying to do this like I'm woke thing, and he was yeah, like, yeah. The, and I think I, like, it did not get over at all. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be a heel, but I mean, the, yeah, people just giving the what. And thankfully, Cameron Grimes came out to interrupt and. They fight. Uh, Gacy looked kind of like Corbin there, wrestling in his pants and collared shirt during the uh, 
Constable Corbin era. Oh, yeah. Okay, Constable <laughs> Corbin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he puts up a fight, but Grimy just hits him with the cave-in, and uh, you can count all the way to the moon on that one. That gives him <laughs> <laughs> How long was that one? Two minutes? Another two minutes? Hey, oh my god! Like, the, I don't get it. That's I what don't the get two it. and 2.0 stands for. Okay, two minute matches. For now. <laughs> it seems the yeah the front half. Uh, well, well, well. Uh, Electra Lopez is, takes on Anna Shear. Another we're gonna, yeah a lot of new faces. Anna's got spunk, but Lopez just outmatches her. Hits a big spinning sit out power bomb, almost a blue thunder bomb to get the win there. And then afterwards, Escobar tells Lopez that she completes Legado del Fantasma. And then she, she says this is just a taste of what's to come. And you better watch out, B-Fab, because I'm coming. And then Hit Row comes out. B-Fab jumps in. Big brawl. The men have to pull him apart. Yeah. Yeah, this <laughs> uh, this little, I guess what? This is still going on. Who is the North American champion right now? Is this still Isaiah Swerve, Scott? Swerve. Okay. Yeah, Swerve. He still, I haven't seen that guy. Earlier on in the year, that STO was a big maneuver in my realm. Um, yeah. And it feels like we haven't had a North American match, nor like it feels like, or we sort of stepped aside from him being what matters, and now it's like this Top Dollar versus Legato. Yeah, everything leading up to the title win was going well, and then he hasn't really done much since winning it uh, individually. Hmm. On an indi- yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, but backstage, Frankie Monet and her posse bump into Raquel Gonzalez, and we find out that next week they're going to fight for the title. So, Ooh, okay. Something exciting. Hopefully. I mean, yeah, we haven't really seen Frankie get. I mean, you're not on. seeing title opportunities on Dark, baby. This is NXT 2.0. <laughs> yeah, so let's keep going with the new guys because we got Odyssey Jones taking on. Harry Millman and Darren Chiapetta. I don't know. Jesus. You'll never see those two again. You'll never see those two again. No. Jones just kills them. I'd say uh, D, destroys D them. plus. See, I've, <laughs> I'm worried that NXT. I'm worried that NXT 2.0's example will be over quantity of wrestling versus quality of wrestling. Because it feels like now yeah. these both well, these two weeks a... we've had a lot of two minute matches with people that we don't. There's already people in the brand who we know. We know Ciampa. Uh, we know Gargano. We know Cameron Grimes. We know Mandy Rose. We know uh, Io Shirai. Like, we know enough people that, like, you don't need to just get rid of them all. I mean, so far, what? We had, we uh, no, there was no LA Knight on this show. Pretty much the only people. Uh, just for a promo. Just for a quick promo. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like, we, we know going... people already. Yeah, I think they're they're going back to the roots of what NXT originally was supposed Man, to be. Matt, uh, developmental. And that's what sucks. I feel like it's a matter of time until like I just can't ma- I can't make the time to watch <laughs> this anymore. Yeah, I mean if uh if we have to trim the fat, it might have to. We know where we'll the fat's the coming from. We know where the fat's yeah. coming from. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't even want to think about what a fucking takeover is going to look like. Uh, well, I'll still watch the takeover. Okay, okay, but, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think unfortunate timing too. The uh, the 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 medical issue with Triple H, so he's not running the show either as well. So this massive change, and he's also not there with his little thumbprint on it. Yeah, whatever's going on back there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we do get a name for this stable. Toxic Attraction comes out. Uh, the the brunette Mandy Rose with Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. And, uh, yeah, Mandy just cuts a promo and says his division was in desperate need for a woman like her. And she's healing it up, puts over the girls. They all say a couple words, but eh, wasn't really the best mic work for any of them. Yeah, you know, but an all-female uh, stable, that's kind of fun. You know, it's going to be different. Yeah, I like the new. group. I like the girls. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they just don't really have – I mean, Mandy's the leader, but she's not the greatest talker yet. So. Not yet. But she's got room to grow. Hey, it's developmental. She's got room to grow. Amen. And hey, I, I just had to say, uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott's last singles match was in June when he won that championship. So he's never defended it. No. July, August. Leon Ruff defended it more than Leon this. Ruff even defended mm-hmm. this fucking thing. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. I don't it know is. why. Uh, main event, though. 
We got Pete Dunn and Ridge Holland taking on Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breaker getting the big push main event spotlight here. And uh, look good though. He hung in there with three of the top guys. It got good charisma, good strength. Uh, crowd was hot. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, later in the match, the heels pull out the old Billy Club. Uh, but luckily, Kyle O'Reilly runs out, steals it, nails them with it. And then back in the ring, Breaker hits the big gorilla press slam to get the three count. So, Breaker looking pretty solid here. His yeah, well, he's, yeah, well, he's clearly getting the push. The focus was always going to be about putting this kid over. Uh, you know, yeah. Peter, Peter Dune, Ridge Holland, they did their part. Champa remained dangerous, you know, but... Uh, yeah, I guess it just depends on how long Angsty's willing to wait. You know, like, do they want Breaker to be their champion right now? Or, like, build him up a little bit and then have him be champion? But I think Tommaso Ciampa is a placeholder champion before one of these new kids can come up. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he'll have a very long reign. But Absolutely not. It. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Braun Breaker. They do. They definitely see big things in him, and he's got the potential. He's, uh, but yeah, obviously still very new. But yeah, very new, very yeah. very new. That was NXT. Just... <laughs> very new show. Still might very to, new. Might but... have to trim some fat pretty damn soon. We have a pay per view this weekend, <laughs> so let's uh, let's get into that card. Uh, only six matches so far on the list. So let's get into the card. We kick off hot. We got Becky Lynch. She's our SmackDown Women's Champion, taking on Bianca Belair. I think Becky probably retains. I think so, probably. I think she'll probably cheat. She'll do some nefarious stuff, but nothing nothing that'll sour the, the taste of the match or anything because it'll be, you know, they'll get a full match, 15 minutes at least, not that 30 seconds. Yeah, hopefully uh, she actually has a match this time, um, you know, something for us to kind of get behind her for. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll just be... A really good match, and uh, I think there's a, well, I'm not, ah, maybe a slight prediction. Becky's going to come out with a new theme song, a heel oh, theme okay. song. A heel theme, a heel persona. Maybe we'll see it. Uh, next up on the card, we have the Usos. They're the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They're taking on the Street Profits, who have gotten a little bit of a push lately, but I think the Bloodline uh, is going to stand tall for a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, I think they want to keep the group strong. The match, the match will be good. We know these are two of the top teams on the show, and uh, yeah, everyone will have fun, and the Usos will retain. Yeah, let's see it. You know what we should see? Uh, in some, uh, well, I guess uh, pre-show action. <laughs> I, I didn't really catch this one. I was thinking about booking it. I saw sort of as I go. Liv Morgan, Carmella. Didn't know this was a feud. Didn't know this was a match that needed a blow off. Liv Morgan wins in probably five minutes. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, it is weird, though. Yeah, these two get on the card, and Biggie and Lashley. Who the fuck knows? Don't. What's going on over oh. there? For your United States Championship, we have a triple threat this time around. That's that's kind of extreme. Um, <laughs> Damian Priest, your champion, is taking on Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. Uh, like we maybe said before, Jeff Hardy being added to that match just so we can eat the pin. Probably so Damian Priest can retain. Yeah, Priest, uh, he's one of the guys that's been very well protected since being called up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, can't really recall any losses. Yeah, any I'm poor sure any poor one. performances or anything like that. Yeah, so he'll retain. Uh, yeah, Hardy will lose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about retaining, we have Charlotte Flair taking on Alexa Bliss for that Raw Women's Championship. Uh, Mike, I say retain because I believe in all that is fair and good. And Mike, I feel like you're going to say the opposite because you see the merch. You see how it's I being pushed. I see more than the merch. I see the the deserving winner, Alexa Bliss. She hasn't held this title in years, and Charlotte gets it every couple months. So, <laughs> I mean, the the whole point is for Charlotte to lose it to win it back and be at running. You know. Amen. Amen. Numbers. Honestly, if Charlotte can lose just so she can beat Alexa Bliss, I'll, I'll take that maybe too. Uh, <laughs> but it's time for the main event in our only stipulationed match for the entire night. An Extreme Rules match for that Universal Championship. Roman Reigns taking on the Demon Finn Balor. And you know Brock Lesnar is going to appear one way or another. Uh, uh, maybe. I would. You can put your money on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would. 
but I'll mark it down. You you owe me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, extreme rules, you know, that gives them an excuse that Reigns can pretty much use every weapon in the book to beat the demon if he has to because I don't think Finn's going to win, even though it would be a really cool surprise if he did. Finn won't win, baby. It's yeah. just not going to mm-hmm. happen. Roman Reigns... Yeah, he's just going to keep winning until eventually he loses to Brock. Uh, That's probably going to be the card. There will probably be a few more matches added as the, uh, uh, you know, be sure to check out. I don't know. I mean, smack as of this recording, SmackDown's over. That's so a good I don't point. Think yeah, added. so maybe. I mean, they'll tweet out. If they'll tweet anything, out a pre-show it'll be yeah, an IC championship. Maybe we'll get. No, no, know. no. It's going to be Eva Marie versus Dude Drop oh, on the pre-show. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, let's get to our final segment <laughs> of the entire week, and that is, of course, um, we have to give you our wrestlers of the week. It's the wrestler of the week of the week. The wrestler of the week of the week of the week. Wrestler of the week. God, um, this one was tough just because I just honestly didn't know how, who to give it to. Um, it was honestly a 50 50 choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, I think I, we all. and I really don't know which way to go, so I had to lean one way. I had to give it to uh, Kenny Omega um, himself. It was either going to be one of those two dudes, and I guess I got to give it to the guy who walked away still as the champion. Um, this <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this dude has even if he lost, he would have. Even if he, you know, even if he lost, I guess he's still. Champion. I honestly have no idea. This was one of the best matches that you'll ever. Uh, this was a clinic. The kids will be watching this for years. It'll be in wrestling camp how to videos. <laughs> uh, you really don't get any better than this. No, like we said, yeah, that was the match. Fifty fifty, flip of a coin, and I went with the other side of the coin. <laughs> Brian Danielson. He's won it before, but not under this name. But it still counts as the same. It still uh, it still count. It's like the it still count. You yeah, know, throughout the year, still counts as your fifth or sixth or whatever. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you can't go wrong with either choice. It was just a damn damn fine match. Best match in Dynamite history, I'll say. Off the bat, I'll give it that. Yeah, for me, it's between <laughs> this one and that uh, Actually, the last year's yeah. street fight with uh, yeah. the best friends and the. Um, uh, and I can't forget the lights out match. I gotta throw that in there. Oh, uh, the fucking Baker, the Britt Baker Thunder Rosa match. I mean, those are you know three of the best television <laughs> matches that you will ever see, uh, regardless of any of that. Yeah. And that. oh yeah, and Good baby, stuff. and that's uh, God. That's our wrestling week, and that's all the time we have the show, folks. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and everything and uh stick around or you know for next week's episode because you know extreme rules will be falling out and i'm sure we'll be building up to some other aew thing yeah and we're going to saudi going to saudi baby (laughs) i can't wait you know uh you know how i feel uh mike you take care of yourself yeah we'll see you after the horror show